Hello there, I am, uh, I am back, along with uh, little Danny DeVito here, and so a week ago I was celebrating a thousand subscribers, so I just told you guys to send in your questions and I'm going to answer them now. However, since last week I have gained a whole bunch more subscribers and I now have about 7,900, so um, yeah, that's six times higher than where it was last week, so I guess you could look at this as a 1,000 sub Q&A celebration or a 7,800 thousand billion trillion sub celebration look uh point is you a you asked a bunch of questions and now i'm here to answer them but before i do that i just want to do a couple of things uh <clears throat> quick shout out to all the people that have been subscribed to me from the beginning or for a very long time because i mean back when i had like 10 subs or 30 subs or whatever it, it really meant a lot to me to see just those few numbers like Seeing your video get no views versus getting like six views is a pretty big difference, so it's th thanks a lot to everybody that did that. Uh, and of those people, a uh, special thank you to Rachel Aranda, who I believe actually found me on Goodreads originally, and she's been there since almost the beginning. I think I had started for like, I had been doing this for like a month before she started commenting on my reviews and liking them and following them and everything, and just seeing one person actually follow me and know that they are interested in what I have to say, actually having just one person that's a fan, it really does make a huge difference. So huge shout out to her. It really does mean the world to me. Uh, and third and, and lastly, uh, Daniel Green, who is another booktuber, I'll, like, I'll link to his channel somewhere. Uh, a lot of you probably found me through him because my Wheel of Time world building analysis, once that had started to uh, pick up a little bit, he actually saw it and then went on his channel and said, Hey guys, I'm sick today, so please watch this. And after that, it jump-started my growth like crazy. So huge, huge thanks to him. I, I am super grateful. And also, I just have one quick announcement here. Um, since my channel has been growing a whole bunch lately, there have been a lot of people who have been messaging me or sending me emails or whatever just to ask me, Hey, will you review my book? Or, Hey, will you examine the world I've created? And, but please stop doing that. Look, like, I know you want someone to review your work, I get that, but um, there's only one of me, and I've already had a whole bunch of people do this. Uh, the first guy that asked me to review his book, he gave me a free copy of it. I'm gonna review his. Uh, as for the rest of you, if you're really, really still interested in the future, the near future, I'm going to set up some sort of Patreon page or something so that you can request it there. Uh, but right now, I just, I really can't be doing that. And also, as for uh, world building stuff and books that are like only partway completed, you really should get a proper editor for those because like, I'm not a proper editor. I'm here to, to review completed works, completed professional works. And I mean, you really can't take that same level of scrutiny to a first draft anyway. So uh, that being said, please just quit doing that in the future. After this goes up, I'm just gonna delete them without even responding. Okay. With all that out of the way, let's get to the questions. Uh, some of these have been paraphrased or combined together because people asked multiple similar questions. Uh, so I didn't want to repeat myself too much, so I just did that. And also because some of them are just worded weirdly or have odd grammar. So that out of the way, let's get going. What are you studying slash what is your career slash profession goals? So at the moment, I'm actually going to school to become an accountant because, you know, that's like actually a pretty decent job. However, I do want to be a writer. I want to be a novelist. Like, I know that's not exactly a, an uncommon opinion, especially not among uh, my audience, but, y you know, it's something that I really want to do, something that I am passionate about. However, I want to have, like, an actual decent job before I throw all my eggs into that basket because the odds of actually making it are pretty low. Have you done any writing or world building yourself? Oh yeah, tons. Like, like I said, I want to be a professional, so I've done a whole bunch. I have, I mean, I'm currently working on various projects at the moment, uh, just in, in terms of writing. And in terms of world building, I actually used to just do that for fun. Like I just create a world and try and populate it, try and make it more realistic or more crazy, depending on what mood I was in at that point in time. Uh, and it works great for like D&D &D campaigns or just if you want to write a story. Have you had any relevant education to literary analysis outside of high school? Nope, not at all. What show slash book has the best world building? The Expanse by a pretty big margin, because if any of you have ever watched that show or read the book, you know that 
It takes place mostly just in Earth's solar system, and that in and of itself sets it apart from a lot of other space opera science fiction stories because most of them are on a much larger scale. Uh, and so this one, not only is the technology much more realistic and, and it follows physics a lot closer than most of those other stories do, but we're seeing humanity actually transition from just being an Earth, uh, uh, sorry, a species that's just trapped on Earth to one that will eventually expand out and control the stars. And so that alone is just absolutely fascinating to me. So that sets it apart from others. And like I said, everything's pretty consistent. The only odd part that I've noticed is that by that point in the future, most labor should be done by machines, if not all labor. But I mean, the authors have also admitted that that would detract from the sort of story they want to tell. So eh, I, I, won't, I won't give them too much grief for that. Have you ever played Dungeons and Dragons? Only every Saturday. Do you live in Seattle? Nope, I live in Colorado. I'm not sure why you would think I live in Seattle. Do I, do I look like a Seattle person or something? I... eh, whatever. You seem like a history buff. What's your favorite period in history? So, this was actually kind of a difficult question to answer. I had to think about it for a while, but after some, uh, after some thought, I, do, I did eventually have to settle on the early modern pe period, or the Age of Exploration, uh, which, I mean, they're kind of the same thing, they overlap a lot, but the modern world was basically created in, in the early modern period, because, think about it, people in Europe went west and then realized, hey, there's two gigantic continents there that weren't there before, or that we didn't know about before, so the world suddenly became a whole lot bigger, and that must have been crazy surreal to them, but even beyond that, that's when we started to really see the rise of things like global trade, of things like uh, modern democracies, of things like uh, modern capitalism. Like Those are what created the modern world, or rather those are a huge part of the modern world. And so just seeing all of them in their infancy and seeing how they came to be and seeing how they were created is, I mean, it's just absolutely fascinating. What's your glasses prescription? Also, you're very cute. So I actually went looking to try and find what my glasses prescription was, because it's on a sheet of paper buried somewhere in here. Uh, but after searching for like 25 minutes, I couldn't find it, and I had to start getting to filming. So I was like, okay, whatever, I'll just tell them that I don't remember. Uh, and the only reason I didn't cut that question out is because somebody called me cute, and I wanted all of you to know that. Has anyone ever told you that you look just like Bradley from Extreme Love Autism? So at first I didn't know what this question was talking about, but then I looked it up and I saw that the actor who plays Bradley in that show is named Louis Thoreau, and I actually have been compared to him before, uh, because a couple months ago I actually did a roast on Reddit, which uh, I think I'll link that down below because it's actually pretty funny. Uh, but yeah, there was someone in the comments there that said I looked like Louis Thoreau with AIDS, so I was like, okay, that was actually pretty funny. So yes, I have been compared to him. Which one do you like more, dogs or cats? Dogs? You know, cat, cats are cats are alright, but like, dogs. Is your dog an American Mastiff? Say hi, Oscar. Yeah, so uh, this is Oscar, and uh, when we got him, they, uh, they told us that he was 50% Pitbull and 50% Dutch Shepherd. Um, what I can tell you for sure is that he is 100% good boy. What would you suggest someone do if they wanted to get back into reading regularly? So, I would probably suggest doing it before bed. Because, see, I don't know about you, but I have had problems sleeping in the past because, you know, before bedtime I'd be like playing video games or surfing the internet or being on my phone or something, and that, you know, that stimulates your brain a lot, and also, like, just having the blue light hit you, it, it prevents you from falling asleep easily. So uh, what I started doing is I started reading before bed, and that really does help you drift off a lot more. So if you just set aside some time to do it, and you try and go to bed around the same time every night, then eventually you'll start reading a lot more regularly. Do you plan on starting a Discord server where people can better communicate with you? I do plan on that. I uh, will probably get it up soon, but you know, I've, I, I don't know exactly what I would want to be on there precisely, like, I don't know what sort of rules I would want to have, so it'll be a little bit, but, you know, I'll, I'll get it up, I promise. 
How was your childhood? Pretty good. I mean, you know, had had some issues, but those were those were mostly my fault. I I wasn't like a Dickensian street urchin or anything. What YA series did you read when you were younger? Like Percy Jackson, Artemis Fowl, Thirty Nine Clues, etc. Well, I read Percy Jackson and Artemis Fowl, and I thought they were great. Uh, and I also read like the sequel series to Percy Jackson. I read uh, things like The Hunger Games. I mean, I I read around a little bit. I, I definitely had more of a... I definitely enjoyed the fantasy sort of stuff a lot more, or occasionally the science fiction stuff a lot more, than the, like, dystopian stuff or the more realistic YA stuff. I, I just wasn't that big of a fan of it when I was younger. As I've gotten older, that's changed, but, you know, a lot of things have changed. Do you like political books? I don't really read them because... I mean, not that I don't enjoy getting other people's perspectives on that, it's just that... I mean, that's what the news is. You know, the, the the news is mostly just political opinions nowadays. The internet is, I mean, it's fucking full of them nowadays. And I'm on Twitter, so I'm constantly getting hit with it all the time. And political books, I mean, I'm sure there's some good ones out there. Like, I've read bits of them, especially older ones, like, because they have some historical value. Things like, I've read parts of Mein Kampf, because it's just interesting to get inside someone's head like that. But... I mean, overall, I just, eh, I, I really can't do political books nowadays. What was the first book you ever read that made you think a lot in a reflective way? So, I can't really pinpoint one specific book. However, there were some book series that I enjoyed more than others, and also, like, some standalone books that I enjoyed more than others. And as I started reading more and more of those, I started to wonder to myself, like, why do I like these, but I don't like those? How come I liked the first Hunger Games book, but I didn't really like the second or third ones all that much? Like, why was that? So I started thinking a lot more about it and trying to think, like, okay, what what about this appealed to me? What, did it, why, just things like that. And as time has gone on, I've become, you know, more critical about stuff like that and also thinking more deeply about everything. So I, I wish I could pinpoint one specific book or one specific series, but I can't. Sorry. What do you think of the world building of Harry Potter and Tolkien? Harry Potter's world building, I think, is not all that amazing, to be honest, just because there's a lot of stuff that could be more explored, or a lot of stuff that doesn't make quite that much sense. But when you consider, like, just how... just how magical it is, I know that sounds stupid, but, like, just how magical it is, and how every time you I read about it, I just feel like a little kid again, and I'm super excited, I really can't ha be too harsh on it. I, I just, I just can't. Sorry. And also, when you consider that it's still an expanding universe because the Fantastic Beast movies are still coming out, we don't know everything about it. So that also makes it even harder to judge. Uh, as for Tolkien, I'm not a super big buff of his world building like some people are. Like, I mean, some people have an encyclopedia like encyclopedia like knowledge of Middle Earth, but I, I just don't. And so, that being said, I think it is one of the most expansive fictional worlds ever made, and I think that he really did lay the groundwork for pretty much all modern fantasy when he did that, so I, I think it deserves nothing but respect. Hey guys, so I actually lost some of the footage here. Uh, the question that was going to be here was, how old are you and I am 22? Will you review slash analyze the world of X? Okay, so I got a lot of comments about these, and uh, not that I don't like requests, I mean, feel free to make requests, I just, I can't guarantee I'll ever get to them, because uh, there's there's a lot being thrown at me right now. Uh, I'm, I'm very much still getting used to this level of attention, I'm, I've never had it before. Uh, but that being said, a lot of people ask me to do Warhammer, like examine the world of Warhammer, and I can say right now I'm never going to do that, just because that is also a gigantic world with a whole bunch of lore, and I'm just not familiar with it, and it would take me a very, very long time to get to a level of familiarity, and even then, there are people that would know way more than me, so if I tried analyzing it and saying, hey, this doesn't make sense, then they'd all jump on me. Uh, and in addition to that, I feel like from what I've seen, the Warhammer world and the Warhammer 40k world Although, and I'm actually not even sure if they're the same thing. See, that, that tells you how much I know. But the, they both feel pretty solid for the most part. Like, they have some weird aspects to them, but nothing really that bad. And 
my world building analysis series is more to examine shitty world building as opposed to good world building or okay world building. Have you read X? Okay, so this one is kind of similar. It's like, have you read this book? Have you read that book? And so I can't get to all of them. I'm sorry, but uh, the, the two most common ones were, have you read the Dresden Files by Jim Butcher? And I have not. I haven't read anything by Jim Butcher. Uh, I have it on my to read list somewhere down the line, but I, I don't know when it'll, I'll get to it. Uh, and then also a lot of people ask me, have you read the King Killer Chronicles? That one I'm going to read very soon, don't worry, because I got a copy of The Name of the Wind. And uh, another one was, have you read the Berserk manga? I have read it, I think it's amazing, but I'm probably not going to do any reviews of it or anything on this channel, because it's mostly book-focused as opposed to manga or graphic novel-focused, but who knows, I might talk about it at some point. Who are your top sci-fi slash fantasy authors? Darren Chan is my favorite author overall, and he mostly writes science fiction or fantasy. Actually, really just fantasy. Uh, but Brandon Sanderson is quickly catching up to him. He's probably my favorite fantasy author overall. Uh, I know that might sound kind of weird, but I'm sorry, Darren Chan, I just feel is a little bit better. Uh, who knows how this will go, because they're both still creating work, depending on how it goes. Sanderson might go ahead of him. But yes, those are my two favorite sci-fi slash fantasy authors. What is your favorite book of all time? So I don't have a favorite individual book of all time, because there's just... There's too many. Like, I, I wouldn't be able to choose between them. But my favorite book series of all time is The Demonata by Darren Chan, because... I mean, holy fuck, that's amazing. <laughs> uh, if you could somehow combine the last four books in that series into one, then that would be my favorite book of all time by a huge margin. But, like, if, you, if you've read the series, you'll know what I'm talking about. Like, books 7 through 10, they're all equally amazing, I think, just in slightly different ways. And if they were all in the same book, it would blow absolutely everything else out of the water. Is there anything you do to decide if a book is worth reading slash reading more of? So I don't really have a specific method for this. I kind of wish I did, because when you asked that question, I started thinking about it a lot more, and I realized, like, well, no, I don't, I don't really have a way of deciding. But, no, I just kind of, when I look at a book's summary and everything, I, I think, like, okay, does that sound like something I would enjoy? But I also usually will try and look through reviews and stuff if I'm not, uh, if I'm not sure, because to me, that's what reviews are. Reviews are, would you enjoy this, yes or no, because you enjoy these certain aspects. Um, but also, I'll admit, I am a sucker for good cover art, and, uh, as you get partway through the story, um, you can usually get a pretty good idea of the skill of the author and what sort of plot you're going to be dealing with. By the time you're about 40 pages in, or less a lot of the time really, um, like I said, there's not a specific uh, method I use, but if there's something that's just totally intolerable to you or you just cannot stand the writing or something within the first 50 pages, then you're probably not going to enjoy the book. I'm sorry I can't be more specific, but that's about all I can say. What's your opinion on book-to-film adaptations, or even book-to-TV series? I think it's a great thing. No, really, I, I do. I think that uh, sometimes the adaptations, you know, they fall and they're, they're awful, they're terrible, that, that, and that's just, you know, that's just life. But other times they do actually improve upon the uh, source material. Like, in some ways, The Expanse, I think, the show improves upon the books in certain ways. Like, I'm not going to say it's better than the books, but, you know, you know, in some ways it expands upon certain characters. It uh, expands upon certain parts of the world. It expands upon some of the technology. And also, visually, it's pretty great. It just gives it to you so you can actually see something that looks neat. And uh, so because of that, I think that adaptations are a good thing overall. Have you got many plans for videos or series you intend on making? Yeah, I've got a couple. Nothing super concrete, but, you know, we'll see how it goes. Like, uh, obviously I want to do more world-building analysis. My next one will be coming out at the beginning of March, so don't worry. Like, it's already scripted out and everything. I'm just gonna get it edited and voiced over and all that. Uh, but then I also want to make a series called How To World Build, because the, the world-building analysis, like I said earlier, is more about shitty world-building, whereas the How To World Build will be more like a tutorial, sort of. like. How to world build a fantasy military is the first one that I'm writing. And then they'll also be like, how to world build a city, how to world build an evil empire, that sort of stuff. So I can give people advice if they want it. Uh, and also talk a little bit about how 
hey, if you want something to be unique, you could try it this way. I'm also going to continue doing reviews, so if, if you enjoy those, then don't worry. <laughs> like, I'm still going to keep doing them. Uh, I, I do want to read some more science fiction this year because the past, like, year and some change, I've been reading a lot of fantasy, and I don't want to say I'm getting burnt out on it, but th th it's just a lot of fantasy all at once. Uh, and I also want to start doing some uh, long-form analysis slash discussion sort of videos. Like, I, I don't really know exactly how to explain this, but uh, the first one I'm working on is going to be about the Maximum Ride books, and how I loved those when I was younger, but even as a kid I thought that the later books were shit, and so I'm, gonna, I'm probably going to call it something like The Rise and Fall of Maximum Ride, and I'll just be examining, like, okay, so what about these made them good? Where did things change? Why did they change? And why did they get shitty after a while? How do you separate jewels from dirt and navigate through today's new author-published craziness? This actually kind of ties into that earlier question about how do I decide if a book is good or not, and the simple answer is you don't separate the jewels from the dirt. I mean, sorry, there's like, there's too many books out there that w we'll never be able to read all of them. No single person ever will. Uh, so. Sometimes you gotta do extreme research and really look into it, really read reviews, really look into all the tags they're using, and read the uh, sample first chapter or whatever they have, and sometimes you gotta take a chance. Like, sometimes you gotta go outside your comfort zone, or sometimes you gotta be like, well, this sounds really good, but it also sounds like there's gonna be a love triangle in the book, and I don't like love triangles, or it's a really long book, and I don't normally like reading long books, but Sometimes, if you want to find a diamond in the rough, you got to take a chance like that. And it's not always going to work. Sometimes you're going to wind up wasting your time reading something that you hate, but that, that's kind of just how it works. I'm sorry. Are there kinds of videos you like to watch on BookTube and thought of trying out making yourself? Example, vlogs. Not really, no. Because, I mean, I kind of just started this channel as a way to get my thoughts out there, and uh, if you wanted to put it less charitably, you could say as a way to complain. Um, so I've kind of just been doing my own thing, and not to say other people haven't inspired me a little bit, but for the most part, no, nah, I, I haven't really wanted to copy anything, I haven't wanted to try vlogs or nothing like that. Have you ever tried using, or considered using, a platform like Wikia to assemble all your world building ideas? Not really. When I create a world, or when I start writing notes down for a project I want to write, I just sort of write notes down and keep them on a flash drive or on my hard drive or something like that. I, 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 don't, I don't use Wikia. What is your biggest pet peeve about characters in novels? Something that might make you stop reading entirely. I had to think about this one a little bit, and after a while I decided that the number one thing that'll turn me off from characters, or specifically protagonists, is selfishness that is not acknowledged. Because See, if a character is selfish, and they're really only caring about themselves or their friends, and they don't care about the rest of the world, and that's treated as a flaw, then that can be interesting, because one, they can grow out of it, and two, if the author is actually acknowledging that, then they can make a, a more interesting look at the character. Like, you can examine that and get inside their head and sort of feel like, okay, this is, this is the sort of person we're dealing with. I, I don't agree with them, but I see where they're coming from. But if it's not acknowledged by the author, like in Blood Rose Rebellion, the main character, Anna, is... She's a selfish bitch from basically page one, and she causes nothing but trouble for everyone around her, and she gives zero fucks about their opinions and their emotions, and the books don't really treat that as though it's a bad thing. They still treat Anna as though she's some sort of heroic character, so that really bothers me more than anything else. I could probably talk about this for like, hours if I really wanted to, but I think that's the biggest one. Do you ever change your mind about things you've made videos on? Have you ever taken criticism in your comments section to heart? The answer to both of those is, yeah, kind of. Because I have changed my mind on things I've made in videos. Like, people have pointed out in some of my world-building analysis stuff that, hey, you missed this one little detail, or hey, you fucked up this part, and I'm like, oh, shit, okay, I get... I got it now, like, and so that does cause me to change my opinion a little bit, but not a lot. Like, for example, in the Divergent one, people mentioned how, well, the factionless actually do some of the menial labor. It's mentioned in, like, one sentence at the beginning of the book, and okay, yeah, that, that is true. I missed that. I didn't reread all the books uh, in preparation for that video. I just skimmed through them and did a bunch of research online. Uh, but that also doesn't answer all the questions, because, like, 
okay, the factionless apparently get paid in food stamps, but that means there's like some sort of currency system in this world, and that doesn't make a whole lot of sense, and just, it, it still doesn't answer all my questions, but I'll admit, okay, yeah, I screwed up there. And sometimes people just examine some of my reviews from a different angle and give me a different appreciation for things. Like, during my Goblin Slayer review, uh, someone commented that, uh, from his point of view, the series is always about kind of like almost a sanitation worker. Like, the main character who kills all the goblins, he's not doing it for glory or for money or anything, he's doing it because it's just a job that needs to be done. And the other adventurers who are obsessed with glory and money just sort of leave the goblins alone and let them go kill people. And so, when I look at it from that angle, I thought, you know, that is actually kind of interesting. As for criticism in the comments section, I haven't really taken any of that to heart, because I, I think it was an old episode of The Game Grumps where they said, if you, if you ever feel like a comment's gonna hurt your feelings or something, just read it out in the voice of Dale from King of the Hill. Like, whatever. Uh, and there's been a shitload of comments calling me a cuck and stuff, but like, I, I don't give a shit. Like, some reactionary incel wants to talk shit on me, let him do it all day, I'll just delete his comments. I don't give a shit. What other literature-related content creators on YouTube do you follow, if any? So I mentioned Daniel Green earlier, I have been following him for really not that long, less than two months actually. Uh, then I also follow Jenna Moresi, who I reviewed one of her books a few weeks uh, or a few months ago, uh, The Savior's Champion, and she is more of like a writing person rather than a review person, because she gives like writing advice, she's actually a published author, she gives marketing advice as well, so she's actually pretty interesting. Uh, then I also follow Jordan Harvey, who is... Uh, she doesn't really focus on anything specific, I don't think. She's just kind of there to talk about books. She, you know, she reviews them, she talks about, hey, I like this, I don't like that. Uh, she does pretty... she goes pretty deep in her analyses, though, so I think that she's a little bit better than your average reviewer. Uh, and she also does these things called trope talks, where she talks about, well, obviously tropes, and examines them in not super, super deep detail, but enough to get an idea across and make you think about it. Mm -hmm. And then I also follow Terrible Writing Advice, who, if y'all haven't heard of him, he's, he's fucking hilarious. He, as the name implies, he just makes videos where he gives terrible writing advice, and it's, it's beautiful. He also has good animation, too, so, uh, yeah, check out all those people if they sound interesting. What gave you this idea, or inspired you to do this on YouTube? I was just bored and kind of wanted to complain to an audience. And then I also figured, like, well, you know, if I keep doing this at YouTube, I'll eventually make money, but then, uh, by the time, I, I think around the beginning of 2018, I was at, like, 20 subscribers, and I realized, you know what, I, I don't think I'm gonna, <laughs> I don't think I'm ever gonna make actual money off of this, but I kept doing it because I actually enjoyed it. I, I enjoyed this as a hobby, and it's only recently that it's blown up, so, uh, who knows, I might be able to do more of this if I can quit my job, who knows. Will you make videos about world building and writing for anime, manga, light novels, and video games? The short answer? Hell no. Partially because I, I just want to talk about books here, you know? Like, I, I can occasionally venture into video games and manga and all that, but for the most part, I just I just want to talk about books, because I want to talk about more obscure stuff. That's a, that's a big part of my channel as well, is like, I've been reviewing and talking about books that aren't that well known, and some of them I feel like they do deserve more attention, and the authors deserve more attention. Uh, and also beyond that, I just feel like the video game community is a steaming pile of cancer, just filled with a bunch of toxic, obnoxious man-babies, and as much as I love video games, like, and my friends also play video games, like, I'm, I, I hate the community so much, I'm just not gonna deal with that shit. Uh, and then the anime community is better, don't get me wrong, it's a lot better actually, but it still has some pretty cancerous elements to it. Like, both communities, there's this pretty big attitude of, I like something, therefore you're not allowed to criticize it, and there's also a pretty big attitude of, I am criticizing this thing, I don't like this thing, therefore you also have to hate it, and if you say anything good about it, then you're a faggot and I hate you. And just, I, I don't want to deal with that. Like people that like books are generally a lot more chill, and so, well, no, that, that, that's it. People who like books are a lot more chill, and so I just want to stick to that. Will you make videos about writing tips and stuff like that? Nope. I feel like there's people who are already doing that, and they're already doing it way better than I ever could. Uh, I mean, I don't think that I have much to add. Maybe I have something to add one day, but 
as it stands, like, I'm still trying to hone my own writing and trying to figure out what works best for me, so... Yeah, probably not. What series are in your plans to roast their world building? Well, I already mentioned Blood Rose Rebellion, uh, but beyond that, I actually don't have anything planned out. I, I, I don't know if that's a good idea or not to ha have nothing planned out, but, <laughs> but that's where I am. Would you ever consider examining peculiar cases of world building outside of books? Uh, so I already sort of answered this, and probably not unless it's somehow connected to books in, in some way. Like, if The Expanse TV show decides to change up the world from what the books are, I might talk about that, for example. But beyond that, uh, nah, probably not. Are you into vexillology or heraldry? If so, could you do a video about these topics in fictional worlds? Uh, I'm not really into those, no. Uh, I've seen one or two videos about that sort of thing on YouTube, and I guess I see the appeal of it, but I'm just... it's not something that interests me. Can you describe a good, realistic, fantasy Lord of the Rings-style world? Well, it depends on how realistic you're going for, but uh, if you really want something with, like, medieval-level technology and all... and, you know, kings and orcs and elves and all that, then... the biggest thing I would say is that religion should play a pretty big role in day-to-day -day life at that point in time. Because if you look at most societies around the world from that time period, religion did play a much bigger role in their lives than it does for us today. Uh, not that it consumed everything, and obviously some people are going to take it a lot more seriously than others, but as a whole, religion was a much bigger deal. And, you know, I could probably go into a lot more detail about that sort of thing, but I think just that one aspect of the world, if you really put that in there and really hammer it in, I think that would make it stand out and make it be a lot more realistic than most fantasy worlds. That's about everything though, so uh, thanks a bunch for putting all these comments down, and I gotta get to editing this video and uploading it so I can get to it quickly. Uh, if I missed your question, I'm, I'm sorry I didn't have time to answer all of them, and like I said, some of them were you know, combined together. And thanks a whole bunch for watching. I'll see you later.